Hi there, welcome back to Real Talk. Today we're discussing the rise of product digitization. We're joined by Michelle Ottiker, who's the senior standards expert at GS1 Switzerland and co-chair of the GS1 Digital Link Working Group. We'll take a look at how global brands are turning to digitization to improve supply chain visibility and also to help meet consumer demands for transparency, authenticity and more meaningful brand engagement. This shift in the way that brands and consumers are interacting is made possible because of standards like the GS1 Digital Link. To explore the topic and the ramifications for brands in 2021, let's join Dom and Michelle for some real talk. Hey, Michelle, uh, it's wonderful to have you here this evening with us. Um, and it's great to have a, an expert of all things uh, GS1 and GS1 standards with us. And I'd like to start by asking you, what are the most, some of the most exciting things you see here, you see today in terms of changes in the consumer goods industry? Uh, well, I got a lot of uh, great excitement developments on my list, I would have to say, but for me, top position for sure is the topic digital twin. So this is one which will help us both GS1 and the world of the internet to make great things for our, for our consumers. The consumers today have those mobile devices in their pockets and they are all ready to uh, use um, our, our standards to get the details they are looking for. Uh, absolutely, uh, I agree. That's 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 very interesting to see that now all of these devices can can make it accessible to interact with with consumer goods. And uh, so we see we see all these developments, these digital twins for physical uh, physical goods appearing, and and brands letting consumer interact with with products directly at the tip of your mobile phone. So the question I would ask you with your GS1 hat on is why, why should I use a standard? What, what will uh, using a global open standard like GS1 bring me? Because I can do many interactions with uh, consumer products and, and consumers um, today already without standards. So what's the, what's the big deal about standards? Uh, first, you're for sure right about that. But... At GS1, we always got our, our famous topic is automated processing on a global scale. So today we're facing a lot of great solutions, but they are not really following the same paths. So to have some uh, common thing in place, which enables you to build up uh, and use a certain, it's quite a technical term, a certain syntax, which is reliable all over the world, will actually enable you to put all those great solutions on another scale, on a global scale. And as I told you sometimes before, there are lots of standards to choose from. So when it comes to GTENS, this is a, a, a standard we have around in the world since some decades. It's used on products, it's already there. So to level that up, to be used, to be, be able to use this in the internet will help the business to business world uh, at a large scale to fulfill their promises and to get the benefits they are looking for. Yeah, so basically what, um, what the GTIN has to, done to the world of um, brick and mortar commerce, um, these new digital standards can, can also do it for the digital world, right? And boost the adoption and boost the, uh, the possibilities. Would it exactly. be also fair to say that uh, by choosing a standard, brands make sure that they, they are not locked in um, into a certain vendor, but rather can access a bigger ecosystem and can switch at any time? Would that be fair? That's a fair statement to make, because as with the Cheetan, the Cheetan is something in, uh, in, in addition to whatever solution partner, uh, is, uh, solution partner is offering to you. So you are able to switch stuff because you are owning the Cheetan, you are owning the structures, and you are able to change the ones which are providing the services for you. That's, that's a very important uh, part uh, about using global standards. So one of, the, uh, one of these uh, very interesting emerging standards that you and I both have the chance to co-chair is the GS1 Digital Link. And we know it, start, it has started to make a pretty big impact to the consumer goods industry. 
but it's still relatively uh, not uh, known widespread. And so I, I was wondering if you could tell our listeners in, in, in simple words what the GS1 digital link really is and what the potential of the digital link is. In, in simple words, we are connecting the world of GS1, the B2B world of standards with the web standards. And so we're creating the possibility to access the, the GS1 world with the means we use on a daily basis uh, to, to get information from the internet. So that's the great thing. We are closing the gap between the worlds bringing the GS1 standards to the web. That, that sounds like a, a good and, and, and useful mission. So building on that last question, can you, can you give us some examples of promising projects you've seen uh, that are built on the digital link or that are being built on the GS1 digital link? Yes, yes, I'd love to share that. I, of course, am, I'm only able to talk about Switzerland, but uh, we are a small country, but there are a lot of great uh, uh, companies around, even a lot of global players. Um, to me, I just want to add uh, before I go into the project that the layers of GS1 Digital Link enable you to use a lot uh, of options. You can just use the syntax in the codes or, and that's what I would like to talk about, you have a GS1 Digital Link Resolver in place. To me, the GS1 Digital Link Resolver enables us to do all the fancy stuff, if I may put it like that, uh, in a, a, to be able to offer it to our members. Because without the resolver, you are limited in the use of the GS1 Digital Link standards from where I'm standing. So the Digital Link standard, uh, the GS1 Digital Link resolver, which is offered in our case by, by everything, helps us to get the message out to the market. We have two use cases, which I would like to talk about today. The first one is the use case around our product Trustbox. For the audience, I guess you don't know that much about Trustbox. Trustbox is a B2C solution where we share data, food facts about products you are able to buy in Switzerland, if I may put it like that. Now, the Trustbox project or the the product already has a lot of information in there, but you can't really find it else you would be in contact with somebody actually using Trustbox. So we use the GS1 Digital Link Resolver to register all the GTNs we have in Trustbox to make them discoverable on a global scale. So today, if you launch a query to the global resolver of GS1, the highest entity we have in the network of resolvers, you will actually get an answer if you query for a GTN of Trustbox. And we do have over 30,000 registration done by today. And of course, those uh, users of Trustbox have now the benefit that these publications are accessible on a global scale something which didn't ask them to change a thing on their side. They are able to use whatever they did before. We just have generated added value by adding those registrations into the resolver. So they, can, they may use it, they don't have to use it. We love that possibility because we ha actually have quite a, a lot of questions from those users which are asking us Hey, GS1, did you heard about those QR codes? Can we use them? How should we use them? And now I got a perfect answer for them. I tell them, yeah, well, use GS1 digital link. Use uh, QR or the data matrix code. Uh, put it on your pack if you want to and enable this new uh, way of sharing information. The so it's, second making the, is it, it's making this information more accessible, right? Uh, more accessible to consumers, more accessible to application developers. Um, th that, that, that's what you've done here, essentially, correct? Exactly. Yes. And we, we couldn't have done it without something like the GS1 Digital Link Resolver, because it perfectly matches the expectations and the needs we have when it comes to reach out to the web, if you want to, to put it like that. Right? So that's a great thing. And the second use case I would quickly talk, would like to quickly talk about is something quite special. Uh, the, we all know that we have to wear masks today 
to to protect ourselves and our loved ones. And in Switzerland, we have a producer of those masks, which is producing uh, those masks for the Swiss market in Switzerland. So they're not coming from somewhere in the world, they're produced here. And this company uh, had a look at GS1 Digital Link and was very fast convinced that this is exactly the thing they are looking for. They want to have the possibility to to manage their data by their own, but they want that data to be found on a global scale. So that's just like the perfect project you could have to come uh, to, 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 to use GS1 Digital Link to support it. So what did they do? They have now packs in, 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 uh, in the retail where you will find, sorry for the technical part here, where you find EN13 barcodes for the checkout for the point of sale systems because they still need them. And in addition, you do have a data matrix on there with the GS1 digital link. Encoded, you will find the Swiss resolver, the ones which you are offering for us, and it will get redirected to the server of this company, which is called Sonderecker. And they can manage all they want. We made sure that all the redirections are perfectly in place on our site. And they take the res responsibility to actually uh, source the detailed information we will find in those publications. Because the data matrix containing the GS1 digital link is not only uh, using the GTEM, it's using the serial number and the expiry date as well. So we can have a lot of more valuable information if a consumer scans this. If a consumer scans this, yes, that's the great part about that. You are actually able to use whatever app you have on your phone. Most of them are not only able to use to scan QR codes, they can scan any code as long as the content is, for example, something like a web address. And we do have that. So we have a lot. We have a lot of reach here. Uh, barriers are low to use it, and uh, tremendous in um, um, details which you can actually get out of the solution. That sounds like a, like a pretty big move for consumers and a pretty big move for making data accessible to uh, applications and, and to everyone on the web. Well, uh, Michelle, time to wrap up. Thank you for joining us for Real Talk. Um, we'd love to hear from you, people who were listening today, and uh, invite you to reach out directly to us uh, at uh, realtalk at everything.com, where either we will or uh, Michelle will be happy to answer to your questions. Thanks a lot, Michelle. You're very welcome. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank <laughs> you.